to the caption enterprise. So if you are new to our channel, do well to hit on the subscribe button, turn up your notifications for the more videos so you can go through our channels. We have a lot of videos that we've done in the business that can guide you as a farmer. And also you can follow us on our different social media handles in Twitter or Facebook and also you can join our WhatsApp group that, that the link is on the description menu. So now, today, we are going to be looking at cannibalism in a catfish farm. What are the causes of cannibalism and how can I prevent cannibalism from occurring in my farm? We have come in contact with a lot of farmers that have stocked 1,000 fishes, 2,000 fishes and when it comes to the time of sale, they are getting maybe 500 and this is a result of cannibalism in the farm. You see persons asking questions, when any time I change the water in my farm, I see the head of fishes on the pond, I might see five today, tomorrow I'm seeing 10, next tomorrow I'm seeing 15, and it keeps on increasing in that way. So what is cannibalism? Now, cannibalism is when fishes attack each other, as in they feed or they prey on the other fishes. So this can occur when smaller fishes prey on the, the bigger one or when the bigger fishes prey on the smaller fishes in the pond. So it is a serious challenge in the catfish farm and it impacts on the productivity of the farm. Now it reduces your profit in terms of sale. When you want to sell the fishes, your profit has gone down because you don't have enough fishes to sell or because of cannibalism that will occur in the farm. So we are going to be looking at what are the ways to prevent cannibalism from occurring in the farm? And what causes the cannibalism in general? Now, the first one is the stocking density of the pond. The stocking density. Now, you see some persons, they don't know how to effectively stock a pond. Like I did a video recently, if you check on our channel, you see a video that talks about calculating the volume of water in a pond. How do you calculate the volume of water? Once you know the volume of water in a certain pond, it tells you on how to stop the fishes in that pond. Now, the fishes, they need enough space to swim and to grow very well. If they don't get that spaces to swim and grow very well, it impacts on how they do. So, there is a lot of friction and they start feeding on the other fishes. So, we must learn to stock the fishes in the right proportion in our farm. We have a 10 by 10, 4 feet pond. You must know how many fishes will be able to stay in that pond from when they are fingerlings or juvenile, depending on when you buy them, until when they get to the table side. So you don't overstock the pond and it impacts on how your fishes eat. So that is one of the greatest challenges a lot of farmers encounter. How do they stock their fishes in the pond? And it makes the fishes start eating their set. So when the fishes just turn, there's another fish is close to eat and it just chop the ear or chop the tail and you, lo you are losing money in that regard so stock the fishes in the right proportion then the second one also is the feeding proportion how do you feed the fishes now uh, there's a saying a hungry man is an angry man now when the fishes are hungry they get angry and when they are angry they look for something to eat and if they turn and they see their neighbor they feed on their neighbor so you must ensure you feed the fishes with the right proportion of feed per time and the smaller fishes eat very well compared to the bigger fishes now most of us watching this video maybe we have children or we have smaller siblings now in the morning before they step out of school you see that you give them breakfast they eat you also put food in their lunch box for them to take to school to also eat now when they return from school they also eat again before their dinner time they also want to eat so these are the different times the children eat because one, their stomach capacity cannot hold a lot of food. So they just eat at different intervals. Now compared to an adult, an adult can just step out in the morning without taking breakfast until the evening when he comes back, that might be the only meal for the day. And it's okay, you see him doing very well. He won't want to find something to eat. He's okay with that. Now the smaller fish is the fingerlings, the juvenile, that are the stage where the cannibalism occurs highly. Because their stomach capacity is just small, so they need to be eating at different or at various intervals. So you don't feed them just in the morning and you wait in the evening to feed them. Some person will be like, ah, the feed prices are high, I'm trying to cut costs so I don't feed much, I don't feed once per day. Now, in the time of you cutting costs, you are losing fishes to cannibalism. 
in one they are not eating well they will start preying on the other fishes and also they are not even growing healthy so feed your fishes very well to avoid cannibalism in the farm also feed them the right sizes of food now it has to do with the quantity of food you give them and also the quality of the feed you are giving them give them the right sizes not maybe you are giving the fingerling the two and them or you are giving the juvenile a nine and them they can that is not the size of food they eat so if they are not eating they want to prey on the other fishes then the third one we are looking at is the water level now i've noticed this in a lot of farms wherever you see someone having a very big pond like what you see here and you see they'll make the water level to be very low you can't have a four feet pond and you put your water level at one feet then you just like you are having a one feet height pond so ensure that your water level is high enough so that the fishes can swim very well now for a normal fish it needs at least 10 liters of water to swim so when the water level is not high that means you are making them choked they will be choked in a place and in that vein they can start eating other fishes in the pond so ensure you give them the right water level don't economize water so people say ah because there is no light in my area to pump water to get to the fullest i don't give them the small water to manage no make the water be enough for them so that they can swim very well and that will reduce the cannibalism in your farm then the last point to note is the sorting and the grading now this has to do with your general farm management practices in your farm so you must sort them very well and you must grade them very well in their respective sizes when you buy the fishes they don't always grow on the same rate you see some that grows fast and there are others that grow smaller so what you do you pick them and you sort them the bigger ones one pond the smaller ones one for one pond now this helps you for proper feed management you can manage your feeding very well you can say okay the smaller fishes are taking 2 mm why my bigger fishes are taking the 3 mm so you can manage them properly to feed them and, the, and there is no competition they are the big boys want to eat the small boys you know they are like gangs the big ones are forming gangs to eat the smaller gangs so there is no gang fight in the pond so you sort them very well so the farm management practices is good and when they are small you sort them because they have what are called the shooters those ones grow very fast and if you don't sort them they'll just turn and start swallowing the smaller fishes and you don't want to lose fishes in your pond so sort them very well feed them very well give them the accurate water level and stock them in the right de pond density and the cannibalism level in your pond will reduce drastically so thank you very much for joining us in this video you can do well to watch our other videos on the channel and subscribe to the channel you can like and you can share our videos to other of your catfish farm friends and those that are interested in the business so have a wonderful day